Hello, everybody. I'm Nywall, joined with my lovely co-host. Tunnel Snakes Fool. Yeah. And uh, this is the CapCast. That's not what we were on the last one, was it? I don't think it was. So, yeah, we're doing some rebranding. We we figured out what we liked. Um, yeah. I think it's... I think it's fair to say that, you know, the fallout and the fallout show pod was very, um, bottling place hold. Yeah. It was, it was like, it was, it was just something to keep there until we knew what we wanted to do. And after some discussion, we figured out we, while we love fallout, um, there's still so much more awesome things to talk about outside of the realm of fallout, such mm -hmm. as we have the last of a show that's going on, which we're going to be talking about a little later. Um, as well as I'm sure this isn't going to be the last, you know, video game related media, you know, show. Like, yeah, Anything? show yeah. or TV or movie, whatever. Just so might as well, might as well set ourselves up for the future mm -hmm. rather than, you know, cutting ourselves off early. Broad we're broadening the horizons now before it is like, pull like pulling teeth to do it later. <laughs> exactly. And, and everyone, uh, you know, round of applause for, Nikki for doing all the awesome cap logo and Thank you. The, the bottle yeah, is there's so many cool things we're very excited uh we have we have some other plans in the works to even really push you know mm -hmm. our, our style towards a certain direction so stay tuned for that let us know what you think uh I mean ultimately we're pretty settled in on it but hey if you don't like it let us know anyway <laughs> all be right nice so, to me yeah yeah be nice be nice be reasonable uh, you know yeah reasonable criticism welcome mm -hmm. we're not uh, gonna get plastic surgery we're not changing our faces i might so you know keep that in mind in your constructive criticism listen if they give me an option to completely replace most of my body with robotic parts i'm taking it that's different oh okay i'm glad i we want some new that. knees on that one you know what i mean mm -hmm. all right so let's pop the top So The Last of Us has its own TV show. Um, we didn't cover episode one, but let's do a brief recap on episode one because we do have notes for episode two. Yeah. Uh, Nikki, what do, you, what, what do you think about episode one? So I'm coming into this as just getting a PlayStation this December for um, Christmas for my husband. I bought him one. So while I've played a lot of video games, I haven't played this video game. I've watched it. Um, so I think my perspective might be a little different and I immediately <laughs> I was I loved it but I immediately guessed like everything that was about to happen. I was like, "Oh, okay, mm -hmm. so the daughter's going to die. It's going to change to the <laughs> the dad's perspective, all that stuff." So I thought that was really I thought it was like very much I, I and it did and it that early sequence followed the game pretty accurately mm -hmm. as I understand it. Uh, but it really felt like you're, especially that scene in the back of the car, I felt like I was in a video game and it was so awesome. It was such a cool thing to see on like HBO, which is my favorite TV network. Yeah, it's they did a real good job of recapturing what was The Last of Us in a like, I guess, live action medium is the best way to put it. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, they did a great job. And then even expanding upon the like i guess lore the beginning of it because that yeah. whole uh beginning part with sarah going you know going to school getting money from joel's uh drawer all that wasn't shown uh because mm -hmm. i know whenever the game starts you see sarah sleep on the couch couch and joel comes in and he's late and then you know they followed that interaction verbatim i sell mm -hmm. drugs hardcore drugs i was like there we go okay so that yeah that's our sarah that's our joel and they did a good job um something to you know take into consideration is neil Druckmann, the director of the last of us games is also directing the show it's it's, really, it's uh, you know it's, same I feels really like there it. it's good and it's uh it makes you now you know just to you know attack our roots a little bit makes you consider with Todd Howard only being a producer yeah, and not directly hands-on in it, how much would change because of that alone? Oh, I think 
Oh, I think having the like the game, just the devs of the game so heavily involved. Um, and we'll obviously talk about it, but in this episode with the clickers was so mm. like the details were so there. It was so on point, the sound, the movement, everything. Like I think it makes a big difference for quality. But I mean, when comparing to Fallout, we also have to think they're doing their own thing, whereas yes. we're following a set very an exact set story. Yes. Yeah. And now I because it's like there's still things to, you know, people were furious with how lore was handled with the Fallout games. And if they do take things into their own, you know, their own hands yeah. with the show, you're going to it's officially going to be like marked as not canon to mm -hmm. everyone's eyes really quickly. Um, which I know there's some people uh, who have watched the last of us show who have already basically said this is, this is a total bust. Um, there was wow. actually, there was a leak for how episode two ended uh, about eight days ago. Uh, how immediately people are like, Oh, the writing's horrible. How dare they? And alternatively, I think it was very well done. So, um, and I have a lot of opinion. I know the changes, for the second episode there are quite a few um especially in the like science of mm -hmm. the fungus um we'll talk about that later so, on in the episode so very let's, interesting i mean let's wrap up uh, our thoughts on uh episode one do you want to give it a rating oh i thought it was it, it was like a 10 out of 10 my overall thought was holy shit, they captured oops swearing um they captured what it feels like to be in that intro sequence of not just that video game but like any video game Mm -hmm. where you're getting you're getting the ropes i could be like oh this is how you like jump this is how you crowd like i could see those things happening um as it was going through the the filming particularly of that car scene because until the switch other than like reaction shots everything's shot from her perspective so it's like her looking out the back window the front window the sides and then mm -hmm. the only time you see the other characters are like just kind of getting the reactions the cinematography was just amazing and it was crushing heartbreaking episode mm -hmm. casting excellent i know that the look is it exact for everyone but i still think they it, they did an excellent job and the the costume design is brilliant so that's my overall thought i think it's a 10 for a video well, game show yeah uh I, I i'm with you on that solid 10 out of 10 um it was it was very well acted um and very well handled the whole thing was very well handled i like the the extra detail of miss so-and-so running outside as a zombie and then and then joel's like get back in your house and then that he sees her he sees or she sees him run her the old lady over and she's like what's wrong with you and then immediately gets yeah, eaten. gets eaten Ugh. and i was like it was a nice added touch the the build up to being in these uh, characters' lives was very nice as well. Mm -hmm. um, I, I like the added insight to it. Uh, just seeing how Joel and his brother Tommy, they they work construction. They they had their own you know company, in which I I know that's mentioned uh, mm -hmm. in the in the game. But it's just you know it's cool to see them live that life a little bit before everything goes down. Yeah. Um, also, a side note: the design of it was so 2003 like mm -hmm. the bedroom i was like oh because i was 10 in 2003 i was like this takes me back to my childhood on some level um just like i felt like that was really good i know it's not that long ago but there was like a look to the paint job and the like furniture mm -hmm. in the room i was like oh this is so well done and, and they wow. did a good job recapturing the little bit of story detail that you can only get from interacting with items like you see joel's guitar you see right. the uh the soccer ball and uh there's a picture you can see sarah's soccer team and it's just like you know just oh, little cute. details that were still that were already in the game but obviously you don't have time to talk about all that and so was that there. intro in the game at all the pr prior to the actual like 2003 scenes but where they were on like the 60s television show talking yeah, about yeah they yeah they were um yeah they were watching a, an old movie and okay yeah so yeah all that all that stuff I just oh wait that oh was the intro the ex intro intro yes. with the cordyceps no that was completely original i was like oh it's gonna be like the cordyceps that erupt from ants and then like the next line of dialogue was them talking about that yep. i was like oh cool i'm really excited about it um yep. real fungus i and i'm sure the google trend for that is skyrocketing a, right now a real a real fun guy 
It's true. <laughs> a real fun guy. All right. So, all right, let's get into episode two. What was, yeah. what was this episode's title? Episode two's title is Infected. Um, so, yeah, uh, this episode starts off with a flashback. Um, we see a lady enjoying her meal in Indonesia when some militant people come in and pick her out of the crowd, interrupt mm-hmm. her lunch. And what well, we see them go back to, I want to say patient zero, but yeah, I, I apparently that's not even patient zero. There was did, someone before that. <laughs> did you see the little sign? There was like a warning about SARS. I thought that was a nice little detail. Oh yeah. Cause, um, cause in 2003 SARS was like one of the, one, a big concern back then before we had COVID, obviously mm. the original like SARS and MERS were, and I was like, Oh, nice touch. Nice little reference was, to the current pandemic. It was keeping up with it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> See now, th- uh, obviously, this is something that wasn't in the in the game, but they talked about um, how what had happened. Some lady hit one of the coworkers had gone crazy, attacked three people, bit all three of them, and they put each one of the people who were bitten off to another area, and then they had to kill the woman who was attacking, mm-hmm. uh, and they each executed all of the people who were bitten um but they still don't know who or what infected the lady but they do mention how this infection is in within the rice and this is something that is also talked about in the game uh because the infection started in the rice fields got into the food supply uh and then had a rapid infection so in the games they also say they kind of explain they're like the reason why it spread as fast as it did is because fungus was in the food Ugh. yeah 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 the just that scene where she's kind of conducting like a solo autopsy almost mm-hmm. um where they pull out the mycelium out of the mouth oh the, the mis the i think and it seems like through this episode that's going to be more of a theme of the show is the mycelium and the under like the network of yeah. how fungi communicate disgusting so Which, gross i was irritated because i was like why are you putting your fingers in this woman's mouth right now i was like she... <laughs> i was like i would not do it but i was like i know she's a scientist i was like i know they shot this person in the head but i was like well, on the off chance you get bitten mm. do you oh know? i didn't even think of that i was just like i know they're gonna pull out the mycelium i was like look yeah I, I mean it was a, it was very cool uh detail and it, it reminded me of the uh the virus that's in resident evil 4 Mm-hmm. how it kind of just scrawls out like that so yeah pretty cool i thought it was cool that they brought that into because i don't know if you watched the little after show where they discussed it but they were like mm-hmm. oh we wanted to bring in because fungus like the what you normally see is like one percent of the fungus and the rest of it is all underground and they mm-hmm. communicate through like mycelium and like hyphae structures um I thought that was I thought that was really interesting. I just find it appalling to look at, and that last the, the kiss at look. the end was disgusting. Oh, 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 you're, we're jumping, we're jumping, we're I jumping, know. we're um, jumping, we're jumping. But it is cool because I mean, like that's all that how fungi communicate with each other, and even can communicate with plants, like with the root structures of plants. I was like, oh, I wonder if they'll bring that into play in later episodes. Like they can get, I mean it. This is, I'm not a botanist or anything like that or a biologist, but um, from my few classes on it in college, like it's amazing what communications can happen through these like root structures, which are mycelium or hyphae. This is the smaller version. So mm-hmm. fascinating. <laughs> it, it is. It's pretty cool stuff. I see is it's nice that they're adding that additional science because they they already did a lot of that research whenever it came to down to the game too so Mm -hmm. to continue that and apply it into the show i think is really cool um so moving on from that flashback the bomb uh, every city i did want to yeah yeah oh yeah draw me uh, yeah that's another thing drop the uh, bombs she said the only way to deal with this there is no cure the only way to handle this is a bomb bomb everyone like that really yeah. reminded me of i don't know if you watched walking dead when it aired but like the early the or like the first the flashback episodes where they're bombing atlanta and they see that i was like oh that's the cure for a lot of zombie plagues yeah just I bombing mean, it works uh that, that is the real truth of it eradicate the whole area which also made me think you know i was like ooh, fallout which that i i do because 
it takes place in Boston. I know. So, so I got some notes on that. So, <laughs> so moving on. Uh, so you see uh, Ellie wakes up, uh, Droll and Tess are obviously just sitting there all night watching. Are you going to turn? Are you going to turn? Mm hmm doesn't and tess gets a bit of i feel like she immediately got some hope there yeah. she was like okay and joel obviously isn't having it i would i would notice it was funny because um they the added detail of keeping ellie's eyebrow cut i didn't notice that in the first episode oh really um but yeah like as she's getting up yeah they kept the cut and i was like okay so i guess it, it was uh important enough to keep there is it a scar it's a, or like a just a lack it's a, of it's, a, it's an actual uh yeah it's a scar okay mm -hmm. that's interesting I was, like, I was like okay uh that's i don't know why i didn't notice that in the first episode but i just did tonight uh joel acting like a real dad uh saying uh i hope there's nothing bad in this bathroom oh just you that's just you you're the only thing going going wrong for everyone right now so mm -hmm. uh, is this I, I feel like Joel started turning into a decent dad character really early. Um, just him kind of lightening up. Uh, yeah. Once they went to the hotel, I, I think I would say that's whenever I noticed it. I noticed um, prior to the hotel, they do some like like sweeping things of Boston. Obviously, mm -hmm. the building collapsed. Um, they panned and they showed a, like a lobby of a restaurant or something. And there's like still table dressings. And like upright glassware on tables. And I was like, they bombed this city. There is a building that has collapsed. And yet there's upright China on these tables that they're walking by. I thought that was the, really funny detail. I, 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 guess, uh, I guess somehow the the fungus doesn't like a mess. It doesn't You know, somehow. it was like putting the, keeping the tablecloth and everything. But I thought little, that was a little OCD. <laughs> it's like, we got to make sure it's all presentable. Um uh, there was a little bit more humor, uh, mm -hmm. keeping keeping some of the jokes from the game. Nice. Um, but yeah, the apocalyptic setting. I love the greenery in these in this like collapsed Boston. Mm -hmm. And it was it was making me go. I kind of prefer this Boston to a stark sad to, fallout to the Boston. fallout Four Boston. Yeah, yeah I, I was like, I, I was noticing that, too. It's just it's really nice to like look at it and it be lush but then the other uh, part of my brain was like is this going to contribute to the the like mycelium element that they introduced in mm -hmm. um in this episode but i mean we will see uh but it is so it is really pretty to look at a lot prettier than yeah sad drab fallout look <laughs> which you know i mean reality of it is, is na nature would grow back over 200 years it that's just what it does if it there would. is water and if there is water, it would come back as green. Uh, I mean, it would be fine. <laughs> I think a lot of the justification and fallout is like the radiation and the whereas it's like, no, look at Chernobyl. There's your evidence like yeah. that's grown, grown back. But um, get it. They, so they got into the hotel and they did the she can't swim. And I was like, are they going to pull out a pallet? She going to get on a pallet? So float. It's it's knee well, high stupid enough. it's yeah. knee high dummy what are you doing come on get in this water uh, and i was i did kind of i was like okay that's cool it's obviously going to come back yeah. uh, are they going to do the palette i know the reason why they did the palette thing it was a it was a part of the gameplay feature yeah. you couldn't go up unless you got ellie to go up like mm -hmm. that that was the rule so i mean we'll see that um, piano was inexplicably in tune when the frog was walking the frog on it. Was that was chilling. another thing I wrote down. So that frog was chilling <laughs> and that piano and was working. Yeah. No warpage. That's nice. Yeah. No rust <laughs> of those piano wires. It was great. Like I was like, oh, that's a little silly, but <laughs> eh, we'll take it. Um, oh, my, they did uh, a lifting Tess up. I was like, oh, that very much felt like a video game. Helping, yeah. But um, I thought that was a fun little detail. <laughs> that my friend i uh i was watching it with uh she was she was like she's like when she cusses I, I don't know why i just feel uncomfortable i'm like why do you feel uncomfortable because she's like because she's a kid i said you were the exact kid that used to cuss that much and she's like i know and it's realistic and it's it's so because ellie over cusses like any mm -hmm. kid would any teenager who just figured out what a cuss word was 
FS, FS, FS over yeah. and over again. So I was like, I was like, pff, I was like, it's pretty spot on if you ask me. Yeah. Uh, and <laughs> like, shout out to the actress that plays Ellie, who is in, um, Game of, in Thrones. Game of Thrones and he's in Game of Thrones. Like, I got, I love, I know that we're going to see a lot more HBO stars as the show goes on. And I'm really, cause HBO does that. They bring back people that have been like all the way back to Sopranos, which is now started in year 2000. Like it's a pretty old show at this point, actually 1999. Um, I'm, I'm excited to see, I'm excited to see these old HBO, the newer HBO people, but she's I mean, an excellent little I, actress. I guess like speaking on that, uh, the or girl actor. who played Sarah, her mom was in Westworld. Mm-hmm. Yeah, <laughs> R.I.P. Oh West, Westworld. Like twin of her, yeah. <laughs> younger twin. Like, dang. Spitting image is is pretty cool. Yeah. Let's oh, see. I, I was sad that she was only going to be in that one episode because she excellent, also excellent. Yeah, who knows? We might get some more flashbacks. I hope so. We it's might really get good. some more. Wouldn't write her off quite yet. Um, I oh okay so. Speaking of, so whenever they put Tess up, they had that, you know, moment where they're sitting there talking, uh, talking about, you know, killing zombies and, you know, how, how long they live. It, yeah, how long they live and like just and pretty much like, do you ever feel bad? Because, you know, you think they used to be human. And it's like they're just not there anymore. And there was a there was a very um, clear message that Neil Druckmann was kind of pushing uh, with The Last of Us 2, which was just this violence between it wasn't between you know humans and walkers or humans and uh the infected it was humans and humans mm -hmm. and i'm wondering if he's if he's not planning on having that tweak a little bit more where because we the they were supposed to be fighting fedra throughout this yeah. you know area and you don't see a lot of that there there's no fedra to be found they're out there which i was like okay i i can understand why they wouldn't be going out there they didn't make a big commotion after they killed that guy mm -hmm. <laughs> you know so it's like nothing really happened there and yeah. i doubt they're going to send people out into a you know clicker infested city to to find three people you mm -hmm. know <laughs> yeah it was i i think that's going to be a notable change that i'm sure super fans are going to have opinions very strongly one way or the other mm -hmm. um uh the after credit scene somewhat justified their decision in that and i think they obviously they really want to focus on these new elements of the fungus and the zombies like more so but yeah i do i do think that's interesting maybe they're also trying to humanize the main character a little yeah bit because more. i was like obviously like especially like with the you know uncharted and stuff that they did uh you can't just show someone killing 50 60 people you know because it's like I get it. It's a show. It's a little unrealistic. You you're not a superhero. You can't heal that quick. That's not that's right. not how it works. Yeah. So yeah, I was like, I can understand they're keeping it a little bit more grounded. Um, the thing that got me, the cordyceps hive mind. Now that's where this is probably the bigger change. Big huge change. This, this is they they go out. They finally Tess is like, okay, come up here. Don't shoot. Here's what we're looking at, and you see what the state building, and uh, yeah, Boston State Building, yeah, yeah. So you see the state building, and you see state house, yeah. Oh, state house. Well, I don't all live right. in Boston. Forgive me, people. And uh, you see all the walkers are infected. I'm sorry, the Walking Dead is coming to mind. You yeah. see all the infected just like crowded off in one little area, crawling and too, right? I didn't have my glasses crawled. on while I was watching. I probably should. Yeah, have, but a lot of a lot of them were crawling, mm -hmm. and and then was the they sun kind of impacting them as well i don't know i don't i don't think so because it was like the light there was like light shining and shifting and i don't know if it was just illuminating them and you were seeing them move but it almost felt like they were like reacting to the sun in some way yeah i don't i don't think it was really okay. hurting them or anything i think it was just the way it looked um but yeah it was uh joel goes to explain or either tess or joel i think it might have been Chet tess uh that pretty much if you step on a patch of this it can alert uh right. infected from like a mile away and i was like this is sucky this is a horrible horrible apocalypse now 
Yeah. Where, whereas, you know, you could just pick off a couple of walker or infected <laughs> in different areas and then be, you know, move on. But now you have, you have this added effect of you got to make sure whenever you're walking into a place that it's not covered in this cordyceps fungus. Yeah. Now I'm like, can mushrooms actually communicate that far? I know that they can through plant roots. Mm -hmm. Um, and you see all the nature that's there, so mm -hmm. you know. and yeah, exactly. Another element of it. Um, what's interesting though that like the the science part of my brain was like, well, how the hell does that work? Are they like connecting in to the mycelium structures and then they're disconnecting and then running to where they need to go and then they're like, oh, well, let me tap back in, let me touch the root over here, mm -hmm. you know? Like, yeah, I thought no. that mechanic was a little weird. Maybe that's why they were crawling all over each other. Oh, they were they were part they were part of the pile they were part of the hive mind at the time mm -hmm. and uh what so i'm trying to think they replaced the spores in, in from the game and the show they were like okay we can't do spores um because realistically spores so no, go out, out to the air yeah there there's not gonna be any kind of spore encounter at all and that's they, kind of boring. They, they, uh, that's what I thought, but you know, they want to keep it grounded because spores can go everywhere. They would never be confined to one area, but whatever. Uh, they replaced it with the cordyceps hive mind. That's crazy. Um, they, they go from overlooking this pile of infected and go through the museum. And this is where we get our clicker encounter. Ugh. This was a very well done horror experience. Oh my God. And I had read that also, I'm not sure, I'll have to double check, but I read that they got the same voice actors to play the clicker sounds that they did in the original game, both mm. the woman and the man who played, I guess there's, I, I can't honestly discern the difference between the tones, but I read that somewhere and I was like, oh, that's, that's great. That's <laughs> very cool. immersive. You know? Nice way to bring them back. Uh, yeah, it was scary. Uh, Practical all effects too. Yeah, I was like all all prosthetic, and I was like, "Dang, mm -hmm. that is really well done." I'm uh, not gonna it, lie; they look a little bit like heads of cabbages. See, well, th <laughs> what what they're uh, supposed to be is uh, basically what what is the mushroom I'm thinking of? It makes me think of a uh, chicken of the forest. That's what it yeah. makes me think. <laughs> it makes me think of that. Um, I, yeah. Oh God, I hate mushrooms. I don't like mushrooms. I don't, if I eat them, they better not resemble, they disgust me. I'm sorry to the, what? the kingdom fungi, but bleh. The fungi kingdom, we're all yeah. fun here. Did it, how, what? No mushroom on your pizza? No. I like mushroom like puree. I like truffle, zest, stuff. Not, I don't like looking at, I don't like looking at the Sauteed gills. mushrooms. Uh, I don't know, maybe I had to dissect a lot of mushrooms in college. And maybe that was like what did it for me. Wow. That's almost yeah. heartbreaking. Mush mushroom is great on pizza. Supreme. Mm -mm. Heartbreaking stuff. So watching all of the stuff like with the the mycelium coming out of I'm like, oh I just said I can't handle this. Dang. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, uh the clickers, they they were phenomenal actors. Body movements on point. Mm -hmm. They said we're they were twitching. game fans. Yeah, that is pretty I was cool. like, that's so cool. You're like, yeah, we're going to own up to it. We got it. We're, we're lanky. We're going to make this happen. We're going to creep the crap out of you. Uh, way, to, way to go, Ellie, for breathing like a nerd and causing everyone to. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like a loud <laughs> exhale. Yeah, I know. It's like, way to go, dude. Um, but yeah, I mean, eventually they, they get into a tussle, a rustle, and a fussle um <laughs> Joel to to kill right like that was oh yeah the, well I also they're not we're, they're they not necessarily telling. harder it's just they're so quick they're supposed to be yeah. ridiculously quick and hard to keep up with mm -hmm. which is what makes it harder for them to kill and when they were telling Ellie about the like the actors both Tess and uh they were just like so afraid when she was like joking and they were like you could just see their like fear and their yeah, like, like everything I heard, changed. I heard there's ones that see like bats. <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh my god! And then when they were like, "We're not going to be quiet. We're going to be silent." Like I thought that was really just. It's sad. Uh, uh, it's sad. 
It's I like, know. what? <laughs> In that situation, I wouldn't be like, I know, I can see you just fine. <laughs> no. Yeah. I thought that was really funny because I watch everything with captions on. So when he was like mouthing to her, it's wrote in the captions what he was saying i watched with captions too yeah it was like they can they can't see you but they can hear you and i was like he didn't say that out loud but the captions still wrote it i thought that was a nice little touch i was like thank you captions i appreciate (laughs) you every day but yeah they uh they end up killing the clickers getting out tess is hurt Mm -hmm. Uh, she's like oh i sprained my ankle sprained my ankle put some electrical tape around that bad boy and called it good that was so weird. <laughs> electrical tape too not uh yeah that was bizarre i thought for sure like my husband and i weren't watching it we were like oh are they gonna do the like both of them walk away and then she like looks at her bite you know like mm. very walking dead kind of vibe very uh, walking dead. they didn't do that and i was honestly glad about it because i think that's such an overdone thing in zombie media where like oh i'm fine and then they're like oh i'm actually bit and i'm about to die and they do that self-reflective yeah. thing but they didn't like, do oh, that no, what have i done yeah uh they this is where they also kept it true to the game and then eventually they get to the the state house mm-hmm. fireflies have been killed Sorry. um r.i.p those guys but the story has to story so we needed you to die yeah you will be remembered probably uh <laughs> also and, just to that set was beautiful like yeah, the marble floor looked amazing that's that's so funny because i was actually I, I have a in parentheses i was like the follow show is gonna have to live up to this mm-hmm. good i'm gonna say this right now good luck i we can talk about all like we can debrief on that one I, good luck there's a lot to say good luck kids um yeah fireflies are dead uh tess is freaking out she's like what are we supposed to do what are we? she really has invested hope into ellie off the short time that she was with her she was like mm-hmm. this this is probably the most definitive proof of evidence we've ever had for a chance oh, of a vaccine ellie got bit too again yeah. oh yeah that was fantastic she was like well if it oh which foreshadowing if know, it was gonna sad. happen to, if it was gonna happen to anyone i'm glad it happened to me oh. <laughs> i was like which i was like yeah yeah good point I, when when that scene happened i was like oh tess got bit and she's gonna martyr herself and my husband was like how do you know i was like i could you could just tell you know yeah. and it's like so yeah tess tess is freaking out she's really upset that you know whatever hope that there was to a vaccine kind of ended at the <laughs> at the state house and it's like we're gonna have to take this all the way we have done horrible things mm-hmm. this is the one last thing we could do that could actually do some good and that's whenever Ellie's like, oh, snap. No, dude, she's been bitten. Mm-hmm. And Joel can't pick up on it. And I think Aww. he had a hard time. Be- he had a hard time believing. Uh, and I think. I oh, think him Tess- crying too is heartbreaking. It's like T- Tess and him were, they were, they were something. Mm-hmm. And, and to lose another something after you try to build from yeah. losing everything. I mean, 20 was... years, because they jumped forward more than the game did, right? As yeah. I understand it, it was 10 years more. I might be wrong about that. I'm not, honestly, I'm not too sure now that I think about it. Um, It, it said it, the original, in the opening episode, it was like 2003, and then it was like 20 years later. And I was like, oh, that's now, 2023, mm. obviously. Mm. Um, And I had seen that the actor who plays Joel, whose name is escaping me right now. Um, Pedro Pascal. Yes. He had said that the character is crouching less because he's 50, not 40. <laughs> <laughs> that's 50. Okay, that's pretty funny. But um God, the kiss. Okay, so now this is this is where another change happens. Cause this is where Tess is like, okay, I'm gonna hold off Fedra. Y'all get you get Ellie out of here. Fedra's not here. So they end up killing a dead firefly. And then that's what wakes up the hive mind because and you can see they step on it right no so what they they kill the firefly he he's dead he's infected and you can see the roots starting to wrap mm-hmm. around and go inside of its skin and underneath the nails and that's what connected them to the rest of the hive mind mm-hmm. and immediately upon that death the hive mind goes something's in here yeah and somehow 
the the root they have very like a literal brain in their their high mind like mm -hmm. that is that goes a bit beyond what mycelium can actually do but yeah the and then all of the ones because then it pan it showed the ones that were like in that pile that they had showed earlier and it showed the like mycelium retreating and then i'm guessing letting them go so they can yeah. go run yeah because um, I, th I think they were just in a pile for the hive mind i think that's all it was one guy uh a little bit there <laughs> tell us how how did test go out let's talk about it because i know you're ready to mm -mm. that was the most first of all why why did she open her mouth for this was it the fungus telling her to do it? Because her eyes were going a little glassy at that point, but she was still lighting the the lighter so she could blow up the state house. But the it, it's not quite it wasn't a clicker yet, right? What came up to her? It, it looked like it was on it the was way. It was like on the way. Yeah. Uh, which in the Reddit leak, they said it was gonna be a clicker. It was not a clicker. It was it, not it, a he clicker. had an eye. He could see. That's yeah. why he saw where she was because she was being relatively quiet compared to everything else happening. Mm -hmm. Um, and he, yeah, he opened his mouth and she opened hers, and the mycelium went into her mouth. It was rancid. That was so gross. It was a much different test goodbye than we got in the game. And a part of me was like, is she getting? Obviously, the fungus is affecting her brain. Is she trying to get her like last kiss mentality? I was like, what? Oh uh, no, because I don't know. Uh, like she, even her, she was like, ah, ah, ah. So like, she was still trying to keep away from it. She was like, I don't want to touch lips. But no, <laughs> that was, was just. I really hope that doesn't happen again because that was so. So was I was so like, who foul. knows? Maybe, maybe it was. Maybe it was the infection. Yeah. Uh, maybe, maybe because it says that they keep their conscious while all this is going on like Wait, they, they oh oh you don't know <gasps> yes they can think the person the person is so much like what happens with the real cordyceps you have an ant who's alive and it reprograms its nervous system to go oh. up to the highest point yeah so that it can grow then the ant is alive and aware of everything that is happening while not being able to control its body oh. it's very, it's very so, much um uh get out the the right. sunken place very much uh, that is oh that puts a whole new perspective for me on like actually like when they say vaccine i'm like well a vaccine's not going to help all the people who are already zombified in that like logic mm -hmm. it could potentially right maybe i mean like the ones that provided aren't like extremely like so so succumbed because i know well yeah like, we're, we're mushrooms are growing and, out of their skull yeah i was like oh yeah because i was like i know uh yeah clickers and like bloaters and some of the ones that haven't been shown yet uh those ones they have completely yeah over overwritten yeah. the original but the person. people who are like infected and are like say see, if if tess had lived and she was just infected maybe they could have yeah. gotten her back like that kind of situation yeah oh that puts it on a whole so at what point do they lose like themselves like obviously they're being reprogrammed by the fungus but like at what point do they lose their humanity like ent entire where there's no redemption yeah. you know like yeah that's, fa that's uh, really it's, fascinating it's crazy it's well this now keep in mind this is me going based off of what i know from the video game as well mm -hmm. could have a tool totally different ruling for this right. and like no once it happens you're immediately gone i don't think they'll do that just to add to the added effect that it's just like oh snap the person is still in there because it's tragedy i mean that's absolutely tragic so yeah yeah oh but, yeah i think okay so the red <laughs> but tess she she covers this state house in oil throws mm -hmm. a couple grenades down she's gonna blow it up she's having they a hard time getting some of those grenades i was a little mad about that i was like yeah. those are some good supplies going out the window right now i, I even considered that until you said that but yeah i mean ultimately she collapsed overkill. it right overkill but yeah she's having a hard time with this stupid zippo lighter mm -hmm. never had your never had your bets on a zippo lighter you should no. just use the frag grenade <laughs> Use the grenade. Right, pull a pin. You know how much easier pin. that is to do. Yeah, I was like, oh, let's go with that option. Yeah. I would have. Um, but yeah, uh, ultimately, she RIP that girl. Out of yeah. here.
Good um, actress. Uh, another non-American actor, which Australian. I, yeah, I mm-hmm. thought uh, you know the vocal coaches on this show. Okay, they need to get paid more than they're getting paid because I'm not hearing my. My husband's like, I hear a little bit of an accent, but I'm like, oh, no, I don't hear an accent at all. That's pretty good. Yeah. Like, have you ever watched an early Daniel Radcliffe movie where he's playing an American? <laughs> yeah. He sounds Horns. very British. Horns <laughs> is a great example exactly. of that. Exactly. <laughs> I was like, is he trying to be Irish? And then I was like, oh, no, they're trying to be Pacific Northwest. This makes no freaking sense. Like, um, right. pretty bad. Mm. Um yeah, so the the vocal coaches on the show are just like excellent. Um, HBO, not a shock there. Great actors. Mm-hmm. Um, and then we got the next episode. Nick Offerman in the next episode. I when he was building in his little workshop, I was like, yeah, Nick Offerman <laughs> doing so exactly cool. what he is. Hardware like, man. Um, did you watch Parks and Rec when it was airing? I did not actually. Okay. Um, he's really funny. He's a good actor. I like him. Uh. Yeah, I, two comedic actors in the next episode because the other actor um, who was in, I think he won an Emmy for uh, the first season of White Lotus. Another very funny, I believe, Aussie actor. Um, so we're gonna, I'm like this, we we're gonna get some comedy in this upcoming episode. Yeah, I was like, yeah, I I could already kind of tell just at the little hint. So mm-hmm. it looks like maybe just a a lighter episode to kind of balance out the heavy. Um, all right, let's let's get to rating. What what would you rate this episode of The Last of Us? Oh gosh, I it was not as good as the first episode. I guess I, mm-hmm. I'll just put it that way. Um, I'm not like oh, I'm gonna rage quit the show or anything like that, but I did think it was very good. I thought the cinematography was great. Production quality was amazing. There were certain things like I was like, well, that makes no sense. And then, like, my whole, like, nerd brain is, like, going off of... I was, like, literally watching the show, reading a peer-reviewed study on, like, like, (laughs) mushrooms. And I was like, this makes no sense. So that was, like, taking me out of the reality a little bit. See, when you do that, yeah, it's like, when you do that, don't do that. Just sit down, watch, take your notes. Because the moment you start getting insight, you'll start applying it. And don't do that. (laughs) I know. um, I, I am curious to see how the changes play out like Mm -hmm. because they don't have that source material to go off of on the changes they're making like it's not in the games what they're doing necessarily not everything i am curious to see how that play out plays out because this episode did make me a little nervous about it because it is it is a big change especially that like network um the hive mind is Mm -hmm. makes me nervous (laughs) Uh, but so i would say i don't know i'm gonna put it at like a 7.5 out of 10 but, yeah. but the, that's because the first episode set that bar really, really high. high, really high. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, I, I think I'm kind of with you on that. Uh, actually, no, I'm, I'm going to be real. I kind of feel like it's more of a six. Really? Um, okay. Yeah. I, I think it's more of a six. Um, I think without some, some of those active, um, it felt slow on some level. It, it too. felt slow. I'm thinking it was like the spores, knowing that they've traded the spores up for this hive mind. While I was like, I think it is pretty risky. Um, I still think it could be handled right because that is a that's a pretty big threat. De- yeah. They're definitely making the infected way more of a threat with that hive mind thing. Um, I just know. So no with- gas mask in this. It looks like. Yeah, it's like because I'm like I know if we're if we're steering away from Fedra, if we're steer, steering away from that, how long until we have human conflict? Because what makes the walk the Walking Dead so successful is the human conflict. It's a element. soap opera with zombies. Yeah, with zombies yeah. exactly. Um, so if you if you kind of take that out of it, which I know we're going to get that, it's just a matter of time. But there is so much so much interaction with Fedra mm-hmm. in the in the game that it's like how how are you going to go around this mm-hmm. um as well as uh the ending with, with tess that was listen let her go out like a hero absolutely mm-hmm. let her do that what what did the kiss need to happen no that was so <laughs> I, maybe, I'm, maybe I'm that's sure his personal preference articles. i don't think it needed to happen but it was 
Oh God, I don't want to be like too extreme. I found I found that scene. Her sacrifice was beautiful. The kiss was abhorrent. I was like, I never want to see that ever again. And, and I I feel and, and if you're listening or watching and you're like Ian, no, this is how dare you. This was fantastic art, but I feel like this is Neil Druckmann being Neil Druckmann mm-hmm. and, and insisting on this is how she needed to go out since she can't go out in a shootout. No, just blow oh. it. Let, let the core of the, them be running towards her and her drop the thing. It, the kiss did not need to happen. It's like, it was a good episode all in all. I just, yeah. Av- after seeing how well the first episode handled everything, my expectations are high and that's yeah, why I, and- I, that, that's why I like at least whenever it comes to like you know uh i had a coworker who said if you show everyone a hundred percent on your first day of work that's what they're going to expect of you mm-hmm. all the time so come in giving 50 so when you do 70 everyone thinks you've done a great job yeah that, that's that's a great <laughs> i mean we talk about that a lot in contract work because that's what we do, that's what i do it's like Oh, you're gonna get pulled on to every other contract if you're too good at your job, you know. Like, um, oh god, yeah. Uh, uh, what makes me nervous is they did deviate from source material on this episode, and that's the elements of the episode that made it feel like less a little yeah. bit to me. And that makes me nervous. You're absolutely right. You're absolutely right. And but I'm I'm still. I, I'm biased because I have played the games. So mm-hmm. it's like with someone who hasn't played the games, I, I would like to know what they think. Um, leave a comment. Uh, let us know what you think about that if you've never played it yourself. Because um, I'm sure I'm sh- I'm sure you have your own thoughts on that. So yeah, um, let's see. And then I guess uh, let's cap it off. Let's, uh, let's see. How do we think? Let's t- bring in Fallout a little yeah. bit. Yeah, right, let's bring I'm in ready. the Fallout I'm show. Gearing up for that. <laughs> okay, so because they have set uh, the Last of Us has set such a great standard mm-hmm. for a video game adaptation TV show. <laughs> I think I have a little bit more insight on how they could screw up the fallout show (laughs) i already feel like that's possibly happening so there's a few elements that come to mind like okay first of all there have been rumors and the leaks we've seen where they're like the fallout show might be following some kind of like the fev or a virus of some sort which uh there's a connection to this on some level obviously Mm -hmm. post-apocalyptic is an immediate people are going to associate the two together there's going to be ghouls no matter what and and it will be it will be compared especially because the ghouls (laughs) yeah and people are already saying that this is going to be the show like last of us is going to be the show of 2023 like how do are is bethesda quaking in their boots right now a little bit you know that's the thing about uh like another thing about the last of us show versus the fall show last of Us show was releasing information upon release right we are in 2023 when is the fall show supposed to be coming out because they're not willingly releasing information no. this is leaks that we're Perhaps. getting um they're leaks some of them look pretty professional <laughs> being leaked, pretty you know professional I mean? leaked uh Oh, yeah. So uh, as far as I know, we are told that it's going to be 2023. I'm thinking that's going to be like an October-ish release. I don't think they want to have any overlap with this show if they could avoid it at all. I don't think that Mm -hmm. would be a good move for them. I'm imagining it's going to be a Sunday evening kind of thing because that's pretty typical for shows like that, you know. So, mm. And I think another thing to take into consideration with this whole thing is they with fallout you are dealing with a a devout community who love fallout you are catering to that audience with something like the last of us people who watch the walking dead can associate with it there's something to kind of go oh okay this this kind of looks like that and there's so many zombie related titles where people can kind of look at that and you know go that Mm -hmm. looks like something i would enjoy Fallout is so uniquely right. Yeah, it, it is. Its I think own they're going to have to pull their audience in too. And I know, I know that you watch. Uh, Am I've never watched an Amazon show. 
I, I, I don't have the interest in it. I'm not a huge fan of the company, to be perfectly honest with you. I do have an Amazon account, so I will watch it. But <laughs> um, this sounds like a Bezos issue more than anything. But uh, <laughs> yeah, I whereas HBO, I will watch anything that HBO puts out. Anything since mm -hmm. the 90s. I think the only things I've missed are like Deadwood and Oz are the only two shows I haven't seen. But everything else, I that's how a lot of people yeah. are with that network. Whereas I feel like uh, Amazon like, is hit and miss. It is hit and miss. Yeah. And there's a level of like, oh, if it's on HBO, I'll watch it. I don't care if it's about a video game. If it's on HBO, it's going to be good. Whereas I don't know if Amazon's going to have that kind of gravitas i guess like they're not going to have this built-in audience who pay you know 15 dollars a month or whatever for their their thing like that kind of thing so they're going to have to appeal to fans and if they piss off fans it's a whole other thing you know and yeah so it's like that's that's kind of what they're working with they need to understand that hey let's work with the already established fan base that we have and make this the best that we could possibly provide right. for them that way we keep them as like true viewers and then that will start and then eventually we'll start getting more people on board because we'll be renewed for more seasons right. and then eventually people are like what's going on with this so it's whereas it's, i feel like last of us can afford to lose some of their gamers because yeah. they're on a major you know on one of the best in my opinion one of the best other than like i don't know um amc you know one of the and, best networks yeah it's like and form. the last of us has two games exactly <laughs> like it's it's now it's not a huge massive franchise it's still you know it's still just big enough to have already a, an established fan base but also still bring in new people yeah so it's, it's one of those things those are those are their giants that they're facing with the fallout show and i feel like and there's no avoiding direct comparisons mm -hmm. it's a video game show coming out in 2023 that's post-apocalyptic like this those are like any lay person who's not like gonna be like well actually one is nuclear and one is zombie you know like people are gonna be like oh, it's after two shows. it is the apocalypse yeah. period yeah. <laughs> that is it society has fallen and that that is all someone needs yeah. that is all the basic quote-unquote normie needs to go oh mm -hmm. this is what this is like and if for whatever reason that like pilot of the fallout show is not 140 percent like i felt like the last of us pilot was like oh I, they're i'm nervous it, this all has made me nervous for the fallout show like there's no denying it this is some heavy competition the deviations are interesting but you know way. and that was that was something i meant to talk about uh in, in the kind of like review was there was some cheesy lines in this episode of the last of us that came off as corny and did not come off as natural mm -hmm. so i was just sitting here i was like okay but i was like how how much worse do you think that will be in the fallout show i oh my gosh i i really do i really liked the first season of westworld and it's the same showrunners and i felt like they weren't too campy but fallout is so much more campy than last of us seems i, I mean like there's the element of swearing being so ubiquitous in last of us mm -hmm. um I don't know. I'm I'm nervous. I mean, well, this has created a lot of nerves in my mind. <laughs> but hey, at least we got something to enjoy as we're building our way up to mm -hmm. the Fallout show. Star studded too. I want to throw that out there. I hope the Fallout show can pull these this kind of star power because apparently there's a lot of really famous people who like Fallout. So yeah, <laughs> it's like let's see. There's only way to see so. But all right, y'all. Uh, I think that's a pretty decent cutting off point, don't you? Absolutely. Uh, let's see. Any final thoughts? Do we need to that? You know, this is the Cap Podcast. This is the Cap Cast. Make sure you follow us on our socials. We're on Instagram. We're on Twitter. We're everywhere. Uh, we're everywhere. YouTube. Present. <laughs> the the video aspect to this is on YouTube, and if you're watching on the video aspect. Did you know we're on Spotify? That's a thing. Mm -hmm. Listen, listen to us on the car ride. Listen to us in the toilet. Listen to us while you're playing Fallout or The Last of Us. Why not? Ooh. Yeah. Everywhere. Sleeping. And until. Yeah, sleeping. And, and until the next 
Capcast. See you later. Thank you. <laughs>